All right, welcome back to Metro Scene. Marvin Jackson here, and I am with Mary Bridget Davies. Yep. The star <laughs> of One Night with Janis Joplin, playing right here at Arena Stage, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, I saw the show last night, and I'm surprised I'm not saying hi, Janice, because All that's right who on. you were yeah. last night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very and, much. Uh, talk about that, playing Janice Joplin. It's the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. She was the most authentic person. All of, she, there was a sense of urgency about her that she just, you know, had to get, get the truth out. You know, we, we touch on that a lot, like at the very end, before Ball and Chain, when it's like, you know what I'm trying to do, you know, in the whole world, you know, is, you know, when she's like, you know, you know, not BS myself, mm -hmm. you know, are you guys so I can stand up here and tell you the truth? You know, she's like, because I don't want to be that type of performer that's just up there singing a song and dancing and clapping. And, you know, I, I remember reading some, one of her interviews and she goes, I'm up there dancing, clapping, acting like I'm having a good time. That's shameful because they've been doing the same set for so long. Mm -hmm. And she felt like she started phoning it in and she was mad at herself. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play someone that, that, that is that real mm -hmm. is so much fun and it takes so much energy. And you know, you go vocally places that you didn't know you could go. And it's just like, cause she gives you that mm -hmm. freedom to do it. Janis Joplin was an ordinary girl from Port Arthur, Texas, which was basically an oil refinery town where everyone was real straight, and uh, I think she said something like, you know, you, you went to school, you got married, and you kept your mouth shut, man. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's like, you know, mm -hmm. and she very much was not like that, so she was always, you know, she was listening to uh, what they would refer to as race records back then, and it was illegal, it was like, it was almost illegal, mm -hmm. and, and, but she didn't care because she was drawn to that culture, and she was drawn to the authenticity and the, and the pain, and, and, you know, it's cathartic. The blues is cathartic because it, that's the misconception of the blues. The blues makes you feel good, mm -hmm. you know, once you get into it and start listening to it. It helps kind of let you process what you're doing and what you're going through. And uh, she really connected with that. And then so she said, well, I'm going to San Francisco. And she, and she crapped out. It didn't work. She came back and was like, oh my gosh, I guess I do have to be a straight person after all. And just, she went to like secretary school and wore hair in a bun and tr she tried, mm -hmm. but she couldn't deny who she really was. And then she went back to San Francisco, started fronting Big Brother and boom, mm -hmm. that's where it happened. But you know, as, as our director has said, we kind of stumbled across this phrase, you know, she was an ordinary woman who achieved extraordinary things. You know, mm -hmm. and she was very intelligent and funny. And, and when you come see the show, you get to know Janice the person and how she became the performer that she was. We don't touch on the dark stuff. And I think Randy just wanted people to come away with a better story of her truth and who she was, mm -hmm. you know. So is there a little bit of uh, Janice in you? Is there any part of Janice in you? Because you've been a blues singer for, yeah. a, long, for a while. Yeah. Since 2002, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, that's when they started paying me for it. That's when they started paying me for it. You always <laughs> sang it, huh? Right. <laughs> you got paid right. for it in 2002. Yeah. But, I mean, is, is there any part of her in you? Yeah, a lot. And the more that I started studying her and reading up about her after, you know, getting the job, there are a lot of accidental parallels in our life, like the couple false starts with college. Mm -hmm. Because we were, you're avoiding the inevitable, which is you're going to be a performer, but it's the scariest truth to come to because it's such a unstable job and lifestyle. You know, you're gypsies and you're wondering where your next job is going to be. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to do good and you're trying to please your family and you're trying, but you're denying that part of yourself. And then finally, you know, I was in college and I said, what am I going to school for when I could be gigging now? Mm -hmm. And they're not going to teach me how to, you know, a manhandle a bar owner at the end of the night when they try to stiff me for money. And that's what I'm going to have to learn. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. life skills. And she went out and did that. And and just, you know, she got made fun of in school and I got made fun of in school. And mm -hmm. you learn it. I think it helps you mature emotionally quicker mm -hmm. because, I mean, she was 27 going on 65. I mean, she was very wise for her age. Like you keep forgetting that she was only 27 years old. Yes. One of my favorite parts in there was when you did uh, Spirit in the Dark. Mm -hmm. uh, 
with Sabrina, and uh, Sabrina was talking about that too. Say some good things about Sabrina. Oh, she like, said some good things oh, about you. I was like, where okay. do I start? Yeah, right. First, it's like this, you know, um, this is a real boutique role mm -hmm. for both of us. This isn't the national tour of Wicked where you can hire a bunch of classically trained musical theater uh, graduates and they're good to go, you know. Sabrina has to sing in the style of like six different iconic women plus do opera, right? Yes. And, and she kills it. Mm -hmm. And when we do Spirit in the Dark together, it's fun because a lot of the show is my Janice's influence comes out and does the original rendition. And then we do like the Janice, Big Brother, Cosmic Blues, whatever version of that song. But I don't interact with her. She's there, she's on stage, she's singing, she's kind of in like a memory type, you know, like display. So spirit is when we finally get to be eye to eye, it's like, I know you, like halfway through the show. And we just, I mean, it has evolved into this great, like, monster of a party and, and we do and we we kind of we have that freedom to riff vocally and in our banter back and forth you know randy mm -hmm. he encourages it because he's seen what we do and he trusts us mm -hmm. he, you know he would <laughs> he, he didn't start that way no. it was all we had to say certain things and we mm -hmm. had but now he because it makes it real and the crowd can see that we're having a good time yeah. you know and she just everything that she does is just awesome and so and when we when we come to bow Every other night, it's either her or me saying, "I'm just trying to keep up with you," you know, <laughs> and, and because it's it's really good to have a an, another actor on stage mm -hmm. that that inspires you like that, and she inspires me. And she was really Aretha there too. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, moving around doing the doing the twirl, <laughs> calling on the girls and stuff. I love that. I love that. I'm backstage like, oh, you know, yeah. Is there any other part of this show that you really love? I love Maybe. Maybe is my favorite song. It was an old Chantel's doo tune that Janice turned into a soul ballad. And because really what she wanted to be was a soul singer. Mm -hmm. She started as a blues singer fronting a rock band in Big Brother. Like she was just madly in love with Otis Redding and now he sang. And Tina Turner, more than anything. And she would make a point to bring that up in interviews. Like she'd be like, you know who you should check out on Dick Cavett and stuff is Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. And this is when she was still with Ike and stuff, but mm -hmm. she was saying, no, just Tina. Just and and Tina wasn't really on the map yet, but Janice was just enthralled by her, and I mean rightfully so. Tina mm -hmm. Turner is one of my favorite mm -hmm. <laughs> performers right. in the universe, mm -hmm. and um, you know she just really was getting into that soul singing, and you know and frankly I'm like a soul blues singer, so it's super fun for me mm -hmm. to sing. But you could hear the evolution of skill in her voice by the time she was singing that song, because she recorded that song in the last year of her life. Mm -hmm. So you could really hear that she was growing up as a voc as a singer, because you know, lots of people say, Janice Chapman, she couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, she could. Mm -hmm. It's just you didn't like it. Mm -hmm. An opinion, everybody, everybody has an opinion, you know. And mm -hmm. that's the other thing with this show. People say, oh, one night with Janice Chapman, I didn't like Janice's music. I'm not going. Well, there's so much more to it. There's a story. We have the the blues singer element, the backup singers, and this like phenomenal band. Don't. You know, don't discredit it just based on some old memory you have, like not digging at her. You know, there's a lot more going on in the show. talking about uh, the singers that she admired so much. Yeah. And there was one part in the show where she talked about uh, blues singers. Uh, people want them to be miserable, miserable, sad. You know, people, whether they know it or not, they like their blues singers miserable. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then they like then their blues singers like to, die. to die. Yeah. Uh, and that has happened yeah. uh, often. Uh, and, and even not just blues singers, but people like sure. Elvis, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. a lot of the great icons like that right and they were so young right uh, why is that what? I think that it just it's part of the mythology of blues mm -hmm. you know with Robert Johnson selling his soul at the crossroads you know for mm -hmm. his fame you know and things like that and then he died very young suddenly mm -hmm. 
and he was poisoned, you know, but mm -hmm. or not, you know, there's stories mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, but there's, you know, and all the Elvis sightings, you know, people like, he mm -hmm. died, but no, he didn't. And, <laughs> and um, I think that that's just uh, human nature. Mm -hmm. Like, I really just think that if you don't know the blues, mm -hmm. you think that these people are supposed to be miserable, uh, you know, and, and that they all live these hard lives and die young, mm -hmm. you know, whereas, you know, we're out on the road, I'm doing blues festivals, and, you know, Hubert Sumlin, up until he died, was playing guitar, and he played guitar, you know, for everybody, and, you know, Howlin' Wolf, and Muddy Waters, all that stuff, and, you know, not every, it's not all like that, but there's, like, almost a romance about it, you know, people who were so talented and then they die young. You know, there's that mystery and romance around what if or who could they be. I think that that's got a lot to do with it. Janice was very, very, very sensual. Mm -hmm. When you see her performances, it wasn't like sexy. Mm -hmm. It was sensual, like she was so real that it, it was attractive and it did have that kind of like serpentine, yeah, mm -hmm. in a vibe to it. So she could do, you know, she had that, she didn't have to wear a skirt mm -hmm. and a little top and come out and just shake it and sing, you know, these boots are made for walking. Mm -hmm. You know, she could sing real songs and still, you know, help turn people on. Yeah. And she did, and she says she that. Really she's did. like, she's mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, yeah. she's like, I, I make love to 20,000 people a night and I yeah. go home alone, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a bummer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but. <laughs> what, what do you think Aretha Franklin would say about this? this I piece? think, I think, well, I hope, I hope she'd like it, number one. Mm -hmm. But I think that she would, she would, you know, definitely appreciate that we're making a point to celebrate those pioneers of those genres of music through Janice because she really did appreciate them and love them and look up to them and respect them and want to learn from them. And I really think that she would enjoy the way that it's like, all right, here's Odetta. And then here's Janice's version, you know, and then, and then of course, because of course she's going to love the show because her song is the knockdown, drag out, end of the first act. You can't top it. You mm -hmm. can't top Aretha. You couldn't put her in the middle of the second act. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you do the Aretha number and then, okay, everybody go get a drink because you're all riled up now. You know, mm -hmm. it's intermission time. But I, I think she would appreciate that element to the show. Very much. Uh, I know we had a lot of fun in the that's, audience. That's the point. <laughs> good, good. Excellent. All right, we'll keep doing a good job and Thank you. Uh, have a great run this Thank summer. You. Yeah, this is great to be back at Arena. It when we were told, we were like, yes, because we loved it here the first time, and it's like our second home. So it's good to be back in D.C. All right, and um, well, we thank you for joining us on Metro Scene. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, me. maybe I'll come back and see the show again too. Do it. Because I know you guys do it different all the time. Right. There's always <laughs> a little something, yeah, going on. So, all right. Yeah. All right. Mary Bridget Davies, thank you for joining us.